We're back with you and ready to get things moving. As promised, we are talking with Dr. Ford. Dr. Andrew Ford is our dermatologist. And today, we are talking about a type of eczema. I think it's called chelitis. Chelitis, yeah, that's yeah. correct. You think I said it right? Yeah, you said it right. Okay, let's see. Good morning, Dr. Good. Ford. Good morning. <laughs> let's see pronounce it differently now. <laughs> I bet it's com <laughs> is it completely different from how I said it? Well, I prefer chelitis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is listen, so listen, I know one. I we're just going to say over to you, Dr. That's Ford. That's right. I, I prefer yeah. prefer. Yeah. yeah. Lip eczema. Lip, lip, yes. Yeah. Well, so chelitis? Yes, chelitis, chelitis is an inflammation of the lips. And, mm -hmm. and predominantly it can be an eczema, but there can be other versions of it caused by the sun and medications mm -hmm. and and other causes, infections, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. but, but today we'll be looking predominantly at the eczematous type, and that mm -hmm. type can be either, as they say, intrinsic, or from mm -hmm. someone who tends to have a, uh, atopic eczema, or mm -hmm. it can be from allergic or irritant uh, causes, mostly. Okay, so that's how you define it. Yes. Okay, how common is this, and in whom? Yeah, well, it's, it's quite common. Uh, it's seen in all age groups and mm -hmm. both sexes. But of course, the causative factors vary mm -hmm. between the sexes and the, the age groups. But of course, you know, women do more with their lips than, than men as far as using lipsticks mm -hmm. and, and other applications. But of course, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it varies. Men, men don't really wear lipstick that often, mm -hmm. unless they're on TV, I guess. Uh, huh? Anyway, no more questions. Uh, <laughs> do you wear lipstick? No, no. I wear lip balm when I'm traveling to cola clients. Yes, right, so but lip balm, and, lip balm and other lipstick. applications mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, toothpaste. Uh, mm -hmm. dental appliances and applications, gloves, mm -hmm. uh, all those things. And, and licking your lips can be a big cause of chelitis because that's the very... Ask. Yeah. I was going to I've seen people do that and then they get this situation of okay. darkening and it looks Yes, in, in actual fact, the areas that are involved in chelitis mm -hmm. are the, the skin surrounding the lips themselves, the very mm -hmm. border of the lips that give the lips their shape, mm -hmm. and then the edges of the lips, the, the very wettest parts of the lips mm -hmm. aren't involved often but can become involved later. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so what does it look like? What what is killing? Well that's it's that's why we have these these uh photos here hopefully. Okay. Uh it starts off with redness and a little bit of swelling so you oh, can those see those are like nice lips. This, yes. But mm -hmm. actually her her usual color wasn't like that and this is uh the beginning of, mm -hmm. of the inflammation which is redness the blood vessels get dilated and in this case this is caused by a medication. Uh, that she's using. So but she I doesn't have eczema generally. No, but her lips look look red and, and kind of swollen. But people but who I know I her, uh -huh. people who know her would notice a difference. Oh, but that's but a I very I subtle, a very the most subtle uh, change that you can have. But I bet you there are a lot of women in the world who, who would love who to have, have lips, lips like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some so people pay to get lips yeah, like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> but you can see okay. a little bit of a change there. There's right. an extra extra lines and wrinkling you can see and yes. the edge which is called the vermilion border is swollen mm -hmm. and looks the a bit dry. Vermilion border? Yeah. Did you know that the name yeah. was that <laughs> vermilion? Mm -hmm. Vermilion yeah. border. So the, it starts with you know subtle increased lines and dryness and mm -hmm. you know the swelling but you saw the redness in the in the last uh, patient. <laughs> Okay, very yeah. interesting. This you is like a that real name. You like yeah, that name. I'm writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing it down. I must yeah. use that again. Yeah. Okay. The vermilion <laughs> border. But, All but right. okay. Well, more, explain more this subtlety one. here in, in this lady again. The the edges of the lips you can see increased lines. Uh, they're yeah, they're, they're horizontal, vertical, mm -hmm. and also some dryness. But so it can be very very subtle. But of course, I'll show you more significant. Uh, changes later. Can this cause you to be prone to severe lip cracking then? Certainly that is the, when it becomes chronic, mm -hmm. then the, the lips become very dry and cracked mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and it can be scaling and, and changes like that. Uh, I, I initially had a picture like that in but I, I took it out. Mm -hmm. I've been showing you the more subtle ones today mm -hmm. but um, certainly you can see it there again, the edges of the lips, the whiteness, yeah. uh, but it can be, it can include the, the entire lip and just be red and cracked mm -hmm. and, and yes. swollen. But this, this just seems like dry lip. I mean, you know, so you so Well, there are there, there is, uh, there are degrees, mm -hmm. uh, degrees of severity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it on some persons extending to just below the nose area. Yes, exactly. And is it and itching as well? And it itches and it gets dry. But people yeah, who lick their lips a lot or fold their lips in like this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or lick their lips with a tongue, mm -hmm. uh, then they get uh, get it involving the, the skin around. Like uh, this youngster yes. bent, uh, folds his lips in completely. 
-hmm. so, and he gets the darkening and the dryness around the lips. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a lip licking eczema, we mm -hmm. call it. But it's another form of, of chelitis, but that's very common in uh, younger children, but also mm -hmm. lots of adults do it. You see, mm -hmm. it's a catch-22. You, your lips feel dry. You, mm -hmm. you think that you have saliva, so mm -hmm. it makes it feel uh, moist for a while, but the mm -hmm. saliva evaporates, and it also has enzymes in it, and these enzymes are used for digestion and weren't really made for, for the lips because mm. they start to eat away in the border of the lips. Wow, so you would recommend that persons with yeah, licking, chelitis yeah, licking get your balm lips, yeah. as well? Mm. Yes, but certainly some things that you apply can cause problems like allergic reactions and can cause chelitis. Mm. As I mentioned, the toothpaste and other things that can mm -hmm. cause it. So, so irritation is more due to damage of the barrier while an mm -hmm. allergy is a, is a reaction to a chemical or an additive in the in the lip balm or the toothpaste or the mm. lipstick and people who have the allergic type then you have to diagnose them by their history but also there's some things called uh, a test called patch testing that you can do uh, mm. where you put the the substance on the skin and see if you get a eczema reaction within 48 hours as okay. well. Mm -hmm. We have to caution you for the next slide so let's take a look at this one mm -hmm. and you can tell us what we're yes, seeing. Yes well again much. the you can get secondary uh, problems with it. You can see this was a chronic case of, of chelitis, but then it became infected, so it's become crusted and a mm -hmm. bit weepy. This has got to be a tough situation. Yes, because you can't really open your, your mouth properly. It's mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, any excessive movement can cause a crack, and those cracks crack. can be very, very painful. Oh. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you manage that? How do you how is that particular situation? Well, that we in just that situation, it was an treated. infection, so antibiotics mm -hmm. orally would be the way to go. But uh, mm -hmm. things that are wet require wet compresses. Mm -hmm. So a wet uh, cloth uh, pressed on the lip with with clean fluid would help for mm -hmm. a few minutes mm -hmm. twice a day, and then the applications would be uh, steroid based and antibiotic based. Uh, this is something that happens a lot. The angles of the mouth uh, can become involved, and that's called an angular chelitis. Uh, so that happens in individuals who may have, uh, if, if you're wearing uh, dentures and they don't fit properly, mm -hmm. it would cause you to have furrows on the sides of the, mm -hmm. of the mouth. This right. is where or you see with corners aging. getting white yes. constantly? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Was that male or female? That was a male. Also oh, okay. with aging, you can get those furrows naturally. And saliva tends to stay there, and that makes the skin uh, kind of moist and susceptible to, to fungal infections and other types of infections. So in that case, you just have to treat the, the organism that's there. But mm -hmm. you may have to change the dentures or, mm -hmm. or if you have excessive salivation for some reason producing mm -hmm. too much uh, saliva, that can predispose to it as well. What are the do's and don'ts when you have this condition? Mm -hmm. Well, the important thing is not to use any, try to use as few additives as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, moisturize your lips. The, if you use a balm that doesn't have any fragrance and mm -hmm. a color, and is, is natural, it may be petroleum based, providing you don't have an allergy to petroleum. Mm -hmm. uh, but you stay away from the, ch from the cherry and strawberry and the, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the really sweet ones. Mm -hmm. And once you can do that, moisturize the lips, don't lick the lips a lot with the tongue and bending moisturize the lips in. Moisturize with what? Again, the, the same balm, yeah. even petroleum Vaseline. Petroleum jelly. Yeah, or yeah. all you those Keep it simple. Yeah, keep as it simple, simple as possible. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it does flare up, then you use the a topical steroid, can mm -hmm. usually do it. Uh, or, you know, in a week once there's no infection. And again, it's not something that you have uh, constantly. Once you mm -hmm. can restore the border uh, to the lips, mm -hmm. then uh, your lips will, will become normal again. But it's, it's, it must be kind of difficult, though, to resist the temptation to lick your lips. Yes, that, that, you know, that's I a mean, very bad you know, habit that people get into. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to beat habits can be, can be difficult. But it's willpower. It's a support system around you, people that bring it to your attention. Uh, to make you stop doing it. And instead mm -hmm. of doing the licking, you, you just do the moisturizing instead. Mm. Okay, mm. now, so we had a viewer call to ask, I'm not certain of the pronunciation, so I'm, I'm hoping this is what uh, the caller said. Is this something called Margella disease? Are you familiar? Margellans? Uh, th there's I'm, I'm Margellans sure. is something different. Where does it exist sometimes in Barbados? This yeah, is what the viewer wanted to know. Margellans is something that we don't really see here. It has mm -hmm. to do with people thinking their fibers and other uh, foreign things stuck stuck in the skin. We had done uh, uh, a presentation on delusion of uh, <laughs> of people who thought there were things on the skin. They mm -hmm. were infested, mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. that can be another version of it. But it mostly has to do with with uh, foreign bodies and mm -hmm. fibers and that sort of thing. Uh, have I personally seen someone in Barbados with it? No, but it does exist. It's on the internet. People read uh, quite a bit. So uh, if there's a patient, uh, I haven't seen one. 
here, but someone would have seen them if, if that had existed. Okay, what else aggravates this situation that you can share with us? Okay, like well, as I, as I did mention, Excellent. the lipsticks, toothpaste, uh, also metals like nickel, that's a common mm -hmm. uh, thing that can aggravate. Well, let's deal with Gloves. lipstick for a moment. How mm -hmm. does a woman know? Um, well, eventually it, she'd know <laughs> because <laughs> she'd be yeah. using the lipstick and then she starts to get the redness and swelling, uh -huh. bumpiness, dryness. Yeah. Uh, with cracking and if she uses other lipsticks then it would wax and wane and vary mm -hmm. so with cessation of using that then mm -hmm. it would go away if she doesn't uh, get that right away then a patch mm -hmm. test can can determine it I've so used a lipstick and felt stinging it was mm -hmm. off yes. and done like yes. <laughs> allergic reaction <laughs> yes. to it. it was mm -hmm. done yes so you <laughs> can get an allergic reaction an irritant reaction mm -hmm. you can also get a, a, a form of hives on the lips mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. from from just something touching the lips it can be food Mm -hmm. berries that sort of thing so for children mm -hmm. foods can be a, a very big uh, trigger certain foods citrus uh, mm -hmm. skins of citrus uh, uh, fruits and that sort of thing can yeah. trigger it all Dr. Ford I don't want to change the subject but there's been a, an article trending on BBC News in the last mm -hmm. 48 hours and it's been making been making the rounds quite significantly and it comes out of India which talks about using cow dung mm -hmm. and and urine in the making of uh, cosmetics, you know, to, to foliate the skin and, and to make lipstick and things like that. Have you heard of that? And, and no. what are the, the, the dangers of that? Well, I, I haven't heard of it, but mm -hmm. uh, urine does have certain acids and ex mm -hmm. exfoliants in it mm -hmm. that can help to peel the skin. Uh, the thing is that it's <laughs> I guess they'd have to do a lot with it to make it very desirable <laughs> as a product. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when we, the, the things we excrete from the body mm -hmm. uh, in both forms do have in chemicals and these chemicals can have peeling effects on the skin. But that would require a lot of, a lot of ground work. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly there would be a, an excess availability of it and it would be pretty cheap to get the raw materials. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't catch on here. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's doing very, very well in India, you know, and, uh, and people are about using it up. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll become a trend here. Mm -hmm. Thinking of investing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the resources. <laughs> you know. yeah. Doug's dermatology. <laughs> All right. So um, is it reversible, though? Yes, Going back to once, lip eczema? Uh, yes. But once you do what's necessary with the moisturizing and, and the mm -hmm. causative uh, factor isn't there, you'll be mm -hmm. fine. It's just mm -hmm. even in people with atopic eczema who have an internal tendency towards it because they're sensitive to the environment, uh, with moisturizing and proper lip care, it can be controlled. Most okay. people with colitis don't uh, have it constantly. It's just an intermittent thing. Okay. But knowledge and education uh, is the way to, to you know, yeah. keeping it under control. And any of this medication to take care of it, does it have any other side effects? Like, well, you know, when you treat some forms well, ev everything of acne, has side it's effects. serious? Everything mm -hmm. has uh, side effects. <coughs> uh, one of the causative agents is an acne uh, cure, which is isotretinoin. And while you're on that uh, product, your lips are, are dry, right. and also they're red and a bit swollen. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you stop the medication, then it, it goes away after a few weeks. But um, side effects wise, uh, that, that medicine is, is a pretty safe medicine that's okay. been around since 1984. But other, other medicines, uh, once if it's a causative mm -hmm. pattern, it stopped, then everything is good. How does this okay. differ? from chap lips though because you know you, you you go to North America or, or you know and all of a sudden you know your lips start to crack and so on. how does this differ from well, well, chap lips your vermilion <laughs> border <laughs> <laughs> well chap lips is just a, a, an irritant version of it mm -hmm. and that's more environmental because mm -hmm. the cold weather is very dry mm -hmm. and this drying weather tends to to take all the moisture out of the skin mm -hmm. so then the individual feels the dryness and without the being prepared with the balms and mm -hmm. the moisturizer, they mm -hmm. start to use the, the tongue and the and, and folding the lips mm -hmm. in, and that's how the chap chap mm -hmm. lips uh, start as a mm -hmm. as a type of irritant eczema. Because I know in the winter, if I travel, I you know I get a lot of cracks in yes. the lips. Mm -hmm. So it's all dryness. The the the, s the lips just say like any place else on the skin has a, a the skin forms a barrier function, and once that barrier is broken down, mm -hmm. you're going to get irritation and various. Uh, mm -hmm. changes on the skin but this uh, can be inflammatory and can be eczematous most of the time mm -hmm. but colitis as, as I've shown you is a is a broad spectrum of uh, conditions from from eczema to various types of infections mm -hmm. and, and other changes as well okay thanks so much dr. Ford for sharing with us on this ex um, lip eczema
It looked like chelitis, <laughs> but <laughs> clearly <laughs> it's <laughs> chelitis. <laughs> it's spelled C H E L I T I S. Just in case you want to look it up some more. One quick question though before you go, because women have started using other things on their lips. I mean, they they're using they, they, there's a. I don't know what you call it, eyebrow pencil on the top of their lips. They do? The vermilion I don't know what border. it is. Vermilion border. It. You know, highlight the vermilion <laughs> border. You're seeing all different the kinds shape. of things. Do those, do those other things create problems to exacerbate? In, in people who are sensitive to them, they can. But, I mean, mm -hmm. every individual is different, and it does, uh, you know, the person has to see what, what works and what doesn't work for them. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure talking with you and learning from you. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you learned something and you're a little better informed. And hey, I learned a lot. And about then some vermilion border. About my vermilion border, how I need to look out for it. It's so a I great one too. It's yeah. a great one. Thank you. <laughs>